On this episode of the 520 Collective Show, it's a new year and change is happening. What does that mean? And more importantly, what does that change look like? We're breaking that down along with the importance of contending for the faith. So stay locked in. It's the 520 Collective Show. Let's go. Hey, yo. Message heavy. Don't prompt, yo. They not ready. Race against the time like four wheels and hands ready. Keep it steady. Beat it hard and they barely give them ears and hear the truth when the life go confetti. Yeah. Message heavy. Don't prompt, yo. They not ready. Race against the time like four wheels and hands ready. Keep it steady. Beat it hard and they barely give them ears and hear the truth when the life go confetti. Just a flip of the watch. It's game time. Game time. Game time. time. Flip of the watch. It's game time. Game I heard you just did a bid, none of your business. We heard you collabing with Riggs, none of your business. Kingdom Club Apparel is more than an urban Christian clothing brand. True, they offer hoodies, tees, sweaters, and tanks with unique designs that you won't find anywhere else. But Kingdom Club also has accessories such as socks and slides, headwear, and drinkware. The best part is that it all promotes the Kingdom of God. Hit up KingdomClubApparel.com now to get in the club and show them love for sponsoring the 520 Collective Show podcast. I heard you just did a bid, none of your business. We heard you collabing with Riggs, none of your business. Everyone that's already given up on those resolutions, I see you. And of course, our Substack subscribers, make sure you subscribe to get the latest delivered directly to your inbox and become a producer of the show by choosing to be a premium subscriber. It's that easy, folks. Let's make it happen this year in 2024. This is Eric Boston. You can hit me up on X at Eric Boston 3 I got my guys with me. Zero, what's up, man? What's happening? That's all you got? Yes. I give you all this energy, Zero, and that's all you got, man. I'm sorry, man. I'm I got Step your game up, things. Zero. You've been podcasting for like 600 years, man. Come on. <laughs> Yo, yeah. Uh, Try again. At least tell him where to follow you. Jeez. You're going to have to write him some note cards, Katie. Yeah, yeah you're going to have to. <laughs> All right. Is your boy Zero for Hire? Um, I'm over on X, twi- formerly known as Twitter. Are we still saying that in 2024, or are we, is it just X now? I'm trying to give up on it. It's weird, but I'm trying. All right. Follow me over on X. Um, you can also uh, check up on the... I got I got a new comic book coming out. I've been working on it for the last couple months. And it's starting to shape up a little bit. We're getting we're still in the preliminary phases, but you can get updates and, and everything like that um, if you follow me over on Substack. So same thing, zero for hire dot or follow me over on X. Get all those updates. Yeah, that's man. what I'm gonna do this year. Instead of making a bunch of songs, I'm gonna work on comic books. Hey, do you, boo boo? Okay. We gonna do the whole thing, <laughs> all of it. Comic cons. I'm gonna see you. I'm gonna see y'all out there, in Springfield. Yeah, well, let's go, man. Little Rock Comic Con. <laughs> KD the Vessel. What's good, man? Yo, you like two for two tonight so far, bro. Like, the whole, uh, all the folks who've given up already on their resolutions, I see you. And then the do you, boo boo, you're in your bag already. Do, there's something wrong with me here. Like, I think it's because I'm just like sleep deprived, man. Like, 520 is going through changes. Oh, <laughs> man. Tupac said there'd be changes places that we don't normally have. Uh, anyway, and to it, follow me on X, yeah, you know, there you go. Like you're encouraging somebody to do drugs. Um, so I'm going <laughs> to hold on. It's the artist formerly known as Twitter at Yielded Man. Um, you can hit me up on my website, yieldedmusic.com, and you can connect with me through socials there. I love making friends, so slide through. Yeah, man. You can only hit us up if you're on that X at 520 underscore code. <laughs> So that's what's up, man. Oh, my Thoughts God. and opinions of this show do not reflect those that are currently being hey, how you the station. The, how you enjoying the new socks you got for Christmas? Fire. <laughs> that's what you get at this age. Oh man. <laughs> Christmas. It's, that's true though. Like Boxing he's not here. as the as the young kids say, no cap. Stop the cap. <laughs> yeah, man. So yeah, but we're you know, New year, new us, 
sort of, yeah. I guess. I don't know yeah. what to say when new there's year, multiple people. Boo-boo. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, man. So things are definitely, you know, I, I don't want to say like drastic sweeping changes around here, but there's definitely stuff happening. And so with this first episode of the year, we wanted to, you know, just take some time and be able to share some of the things that we've been kind of, you know, talking about, working through, putting in place behind the scenes, where we feel like God is taking us in this new year of 2024. But while some things change, some things stay the same. And what's important, Katie, is that we got to dive into this word, man. What you got for us? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So uh, on the backs of that pig that you just wrote in, I'm going to go first Corinthians and we're going to start 13 first Corinthians, of course, uh, you know, most generally I refer to um, as the love chapter. Um, where the Apostle Paul kind of breaks down God's idea of love, what it looks like, what it should consist of, what it shouldn't consist of. Um, We find something very interesting here uh, in verse 11. Very familiar scripture, but hopefully um, what we share with you guys uh, during the show will bring some insight um, and some revelation to the verse. And so uh, Paul says here, 1 Corinthians 13 and 11, when I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Um, growth, and this is something that we're going to touch on a lot um, during the show, but growth for a lot of individuals um, can be painful. And I think primarily it becomes increasingly painful the longer that we try to stand in the way of it, the longer that we try to prevent God from doing what he wants to do, um, ultimately what he's purpose, what he has predestined to happen, what he's uh provide it to happen you know we talk about things like providence and sovereignty and things of that nature um and i think just kind of earlier you know you guys were talking a little bit about god's will and, and and what that looks like um unfortunately though too often we really find ourselves kicking against the pricks and it it, it causes us to underdevelop and when we're underdeveloped um then we can't fully give people everything that we're supposed to um i love this scripture um because a while back God kind of revealed to me uh, some of the things that Paul was saying and and why we find this here in this love chapter. Um, you know, Paul goes through and he talks about love and he talks about what love is. It's patient. It's kind. It's long suffering. Um, you know, it, 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 it keeps no record of wrong. It does these things that according to the flesh don't seem right. And then once Paul finishes that list, he gets down here to verse 11 and he's like, when I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. So what is Paul saying? That all of those other things, all of those other ideas that we thought love was, and we thought that love was based on condition, we thought that love was based on status, we thought that love was based on things, all of those other ideals and concepts that the world tries to push on you as to what love is and what love looks like and what it does and what it doesn't, they're childish. When I grow in the Lord, God's idea of love replaces what I've been taught that love was. And that was whether it was intentionally taught to me directly, indirectly, by osmosis, however it is that we learn and and, and we assimilate and and gain knowledge to apply. Everything that I've thought about love that the world introduces me to is childish, it's immature. It does not get us closer to that place of perfection that God expects for us. So when I became a man, I put away childish things. I stopped waiting for other people to love me first so that I could love as a response. I started loving with intent and being proactive instead of reactive. I stopped waiting for people to do right and decided to treat people right regardless of what they do. These are the things that God requires of us. It's a place and it's a level of maturity. And then Eric, I just want to say this really quick before I get you guys to chime in because you mentioned something in terms of like direction wise for us as a group. It's not that things are, like you said, drastically changing. But what happens is and here in verse 12, I'm going to pull a Eric Boston. Uh, for now, we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. The closer you get to where it is that you're supposed to be, things become clearer. 
And so when we talk about growing and developing and becoming who it is and what it is that God calls for us, the, the, the more we walk, the more we stay in God's face, the more clearly we see what it is that we're supposed to be doing. So go ahead, guys. Y'all chime in, man, and let me know uh, what you think about that. Well, I, I appreciate that you went ahead and read verse 12, man, because I was actually going to ask you to read verse 12 in that KJV version because I'm comparing it to this CSB that's in front of me, okay? And I want to read it to you in CSB as well because I, I love what it says here, man. So we got the whole, you know, when I was a child, I spoke like a child. That's pretty much the same thing. This it says in verse 12, for now we see only a reflection as in a mirror but then face to face now i know in part but then i will know fully as i am fully known and we might as well finish out this uh chapter here man going to verse 13 which everyone knows that yeah now now these three remain faith hope and love but the greatest of these is love um i'm gonna i'll come back to I, I, i feel like zero is probably needing to um say something because you know he's no, still got no, those I'm childish actually... tendencies a little bit. So, um, <laughs> oh, oh. Pew, 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 pew. zero, I'm the childish gonna... Bambino is in the house. Uh, I'm just being ministered to over here, y'all. Y'all doing good. Well, what, I was gonna what, play what, the organ, but I can't. What, get what, it to what are you getting from this, zero? Uh, that much. I don't know, man. Cool. I'm 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 really along for the ride on this one. I don't I don't feel like I have a whole lot to contribute that, or uh, that uh, KD didn't already just say. Like, I usually have like some left field turn like angle to bring to you, but I really don't. I'm sorry. Well, so okay, so going going back into verse twelve, man. Um, geez, here's what's so interesting to me, right? Like, I mean, in in both versions of this that we've heard here, right? When we say, for now, we see only a reflection in, in the CSB uh, as in a mirror, right? Or as uh, Katie said, I, I believe it was like as in darkened glass, right? Yeah, through glass darkly. Dude, yep. I mean, think about that, man. Like, whenever we look at either one of those, we're getting a picture, a glimpse of reality, but glimpse. it's not quite exactly right, right? So it's it's enough for us to maybe make some assumptions, make some judgments, with or make some adjustments, or make some adjustments. Yeah, yeah, right, because. Um, but we have this promise, man, that when we're going, when, when we make that leap, when we leave those childish things behind, right? When when God pulls us to where He needs us to be, now all of a sudden we're seeing stuff not through this kind of fragmented reality, but we're seeing it as if we're standing face to face with it, right? Um, we're knowing that truth. We're knowing God's intent, his heart, his purpose. And it tells us fully, which is crazy, man. That is crazy to me. And not only that, but we know it it, with a fullness in the way that we ourselves are fully known. Dude, that blows my mind, dude. I came up with the angle. Okay. Um, Welcome to the conversation. Yeah. Thanks, <laughs> thanks for having me. No, I, um, I, I'm looking at this as like a, as a father watching my kids come into knowledge of these very basic things, even theological things. And sometimes you'll be having a conversation about basic things with people who they they know they know already they know all the theology they know the right answers they know the things to say the buzzwords and it comes out in such a way where it's just like they're just checking a box and they know it better than you know new believers like my young children that are learning these things and so like as a father i have a lot a lot of grace for them and i'm very excited and i'm very happy when they start to get these things but it kind of reminds me of like when you expect somebody to just get it and you're and you're kind of like approaching it lovelessly and it's just checking a box and you're like no no it's this and you you know what i mean like when you're trying to have a conversation and and they're just reciting romans back to you and it's like we're not even having a conversation 
Like, I know you know what the right answer is, but I'm trying to talk to you, and there's just zero love in the conversation. I'm tone it's deaf. Like, it's like there's no humanity there. And I feel like Paul is kind of showing us like how to complete what we already have. Facts. I like that. I think that's a good way to put it. Um, and it's amazing that we can have all of this knowledge, um, but we can miss when it comes to applying it. And it's just why, you know, we've talked about it before. Um, and I know it's not a popular opinion because a lot of people, you know, chase, um, you know, a certificate or a degree or a title based on a certificate or a degree um, from a lot of you know seminaries and stuff like that. But students and disciples are two different people. It's not yeah. enough to just make great Bible students. Jesus didn't command us to go and make Bible students of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. He said, go and make disciples. Individuals who have the heart of God and who understand it. And so there's a difference between textbook knowledge and real life application and experience. And experience is what the scripture commands us to add to our faith um, and add knowledge, knowledge through experience, not just based on what I've read, but now what I know because I've learned it, because I've seen it, because I've lived it. Um, and so it's just it, it really should give us pause because we may know something we might be missing in the application of it. And this really, really, really touches on the heart of intimacy with God. And again, he talks about being fully known. This is really what intimacy is. It's not just hinged on physical or, you know, sexual or intimacy is knowing and being fully known. It's, it's being intimate. The more time you spend with somebody, the more that you learn about them, the more that you become like them. You're supposed to good, bad or indifferent. Which is, again, for us, the more time that we spend with God, the more we're supposed to become like him. And so the more that I spend looking at him, the more that I allow him to look through me, the more that I allow the word to measure me. Then the more that I start taking on the image and likeness that I've been recreated in um, through the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so it's really important that we allow that love to grow us up and mature us and get us to that point of um perfection because it's, it's 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 what god is requiring of us and then i got a real quick um uh question for you guys kind of like a trivia question mm. why is love here referred to as cheer why is love referred to as cheer in the scripture in this passage yep um i think it kind of hinges on the point i was going to make after uh but this is, I I believe that this is love that is giving given willingly from those who do have the experience and the strength and have been walking in faith for a while, um, and so it's it, it's kind of like a love that requires some work. I love you, bro. Because you got it. You nailed it on it. This charity is love given away. It's not love that's kept it's not love that's sat on it's not love that's talked about but never acted on this bible says in first john that you know i can't love god who i haven't seen and not love my brother who i look at all the time so charity is love given away and that's the god type of love and you don't love god and you don't love people and you don't love at all if your love is simply held and kept to yourself love given away that's why love is referred to as charity here boy you nailed it I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> I did. I did want to want to touch on that though. Um, I I kind of locked up because as we were going through it the first time, I was thinking, "Well, oh, this is simple. Like everybody knows this." But then I start thinking, like people, like people will take a passage like this and they'll be like, they'll interpret it and they'll choose to interpret it as, "How is this about God's love for me?" So they can feel good. You know, uh, you know how people are. But I honestly believe, like this is harder to accept when you're a christian who's been a christian for a long time you know like you're not because this is commanding you to love people actively and it's not just like well i've been doing this and i and I'm, you're going through the motions and you're checking the boxes and this seems like more of a reminder to leaders like hey you have to be a part of the body too you have to be people too like these people they need to feel they need to feel love from you as well 
Like, yes, you have the right answers. Yes, you have the degrees and, and the positions. And like, you ever go into a, a, a room and, and I don't know about you. I'll, I'll speak for myself. I'll go into some situations where I feel like I have nothing to contribute to what's going on here. Uh, even though I know the theologically correct answer. Because I know it won't be accepted from me because I have a, such a low status, no degree, no position type person. In their eyes, I'm just Joe whoever. And I, yes, we wrestle with theological stuff all the time on this show. Like, we actually think about this stuff. But you, I can walk into a room, we're talking about something simple, and I'm like, well, I better just keep my opinions to myself. And this, this passage kind of like jerk me into that mode somehow nothing it's not against you guys or anything i think it's like triggered something in me because i've been in these situations a lot where it's like i feel like i know what to say but like they're not going to hear it from me so it it has to, i think it has to be a reminder to those who are more mature than us even like this is this is what you can do to people if you're loveless like show people love be human to people facts facts well, I mean, it will be a reminder to 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 yourself and myself and, and 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 Eric and you know other people with other platforms. It's not love if we withhold the truth from individuals. Now, how the truth gets delivered is very important. You know, the mm -hmm. spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophets. That means that we do have some say so in how we deliver what God yeah. has given us. But at the end of the day, if I choose to sit on it, if I don't warn individuals, if I don't instruct, if I don't have these conversations, then it becomes like what God told Ezekiel. If you don't warn them, then, you know, they're going to die and go to hell and your blood will I require or their blood will I require on your hands. And so um, it's important that we remember that love requires tough conversations. And if God deals with us in regards to it, um, we better be seeking God on whether or not it's for us to share. If it's just something for us to pray about that has God does not give us things to not take any action. Yeah. I want to go back to, to verse 11 just for a, a quick minute because it's something that was hitting me was, you know, we talk about these childish things, right? And, you know, we have a tendency to, like, kind of make fun of each other, right, for, for being childish. But yet a no, lot of... You do. Well, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I had to get back in the game. I need okay. to pour in them boards. <laughs> you know, but, but no, but, but, at the, but even though... That is the thing that people like point out and mock. Yet a lot of people still continue to hold on to the childish aspects of life. Why? Because growing and moving past that is is, is scary. It's uncomfortable at times, right? And I think even like for us as we talk about, you know, what we are like the, the, the place in the road where we are currently at here as a platform, you know, we've wrestled with some of this stuff for a while. Right. And I think for me, it's partially because it's like, well, okay, that's not what we were doing five years ago, but we're, we've outgrown or not necessarily that we've outgrown it, but we've, but we have matured. So it I can't, that's the right the term, bro. Can't the right the time. Same, right? What's up, everyone? It's Darius back again to talk about some releases that made waves in December 2023. Thankful by Third Citizen, Cut Right, and B Meads is a great one with the perfect vibe and a reminder to be, well, thankful. Take Him to Church is an exciting comeback single by Christian rap legends P.I.D. That's Preachers in Disguise. It's a heavy hitting boom bap track with organ samples, and let me tell you, that song as a comeback does not disappoint. 180 by Intellect featuring K-Drama and DJ Sean P is another great boom bap track with some really killer introspective lyrics from both MCs. Salachi Vaz released her much anticipated album Quasar on December 10th. That's definitely worth checking out. And then finally, Adam, Perry Illis, and Kayla Montgomery teamed up and recruited some killer features for Open Letters, a standout project that just reeks of excellence. Just a reminder that you can always catch more of my thoughts about new music on 520 Collect monthly music listening show Dino Nuggets. I'm Darius Mullen and you're listening to the 520 Collective show. Peace. We've been talking about um, you know the, the changes and where we feel like God's led us in, in 2024 and a major theme behind all of this man and, you know I think KD you were the one who actually was like hey you realize that this is 
what all this is essentially saying here, right? And that is earnestly contending for the faith. And as we talked about, it's like, yo, that is definitely like the driving force behind what is happening. So, Katie, I'm gonna let you run with it, man. Like, just break it down for us, man. Like, what does that mean when we're talking about earnestly contending for the faith? Like, where does that come from? And then we're going to jump into just like how it's applying to what's happening here with the 520 Collective. Absolutely. So um, we're going to uh, just kind of uh, use this as our point of reference. It's Jude. Jude has one chapter, uh, if you want to call it that. In verse three, uh, just simply reads, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, common faith, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you, strongly encourage you, that you should earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Um, earnestly contending for the faith is vitally important because what happens is when there is no. So, again, like the scripture talks about common salvation or the common faith, like the one that should generally be taught and passed down and handed down to believers. If God is the same yesterday, today and forever and, and God is not divided. Why is the body of Christ? But there's so many ideals, there's so many offshoots. Um, when we talk about like denominations and things of that nature, it's because one person interprets the scripture one way and another person interprets it this way. And they create and they formulate different doctrines that are built on what essentially is opinion. So earnestly contending for the faith is what does the Bible say about this stuff? And are we able to maturely accurately as the scripture says rightly divide you study to show yourself approval workmen that need if not be ashamed but rightly dividing the word of truth it's 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 important we we we, we have a responsibility so anybody who has a platform any artist any any media outlet that says hey we are a christian whatever it is which again is another reason why a lot of people don't want the name of christ on what it is that they do anybody that says i am a christian this that or the third we have a responsibility to push and promote christ first i don't care who you are i don't care what you're doing what's the main reason behind this jesus says in the gospel according to john that if i be lifted up from the earth i'll draw all men unto me so the point of our outreach the point of us becoming all things to all people that we might save some the point of us you know using strategy and being wise and getting into these different industries and these different boardrooms and having a seat at the table the point for us as christians is to preach christ is to share the gospel of jesus christ with individuals is to not just say it but to live it to exhibit so there's a marriage between our words and our works Earnestly contending for the faith means that we are fighting for what it is that God says is right. And that is a responsibility that we have as believers. Well, and I, I think the question, man, comes down to this. And it is like, why do we feel like when we are having these conversations in a Christian space, man, why are we feeling so convinced so convicted that we even in these spaces that we're in that we need to contend so strongly for the faith man i mean it's one thing to be out in the world right and contend mm -hmm. for the faith, but, but but we but we're we're having conversations with people who say yo we're, we're brothers right supposed to be supposed to be right because i think that's what it comes down to is like hey We've been seeing some things within this culture that we're a part of. And we've kind of, you know, there's some stuff that's just not adding up. It's not lining up where it should be. So while we have had conversations in the past, right? And, and we've been willing to take on some topics that are not comfortable. I think we're getting to a place now where it's like, hey, we've talked about there needs to be accountability. We've talked about we need to look in the mirror. Now let's let's actually hold that mirror up so that can happen, right? Um, Zero, what do, what do you think, man? Like, what's at the root of what we are seeing in Christian culture, man? And, and why have we arrived to the place that we that we're at? Well, 
Okay, I'm gonna bring it. A lot of people um, are not in Christianity because they love Jesus. They're in Christianity or they're pursuing some form of what they think is Christianity because they think that it's the ends to a means. A good life, happiness, you know, health, wealth, and success. Uh, they want things and they think that God is how you get those things. Or that, you know, being religious or being spiritual or however war, watered down it needs to be over time. And that includes uh, celebrity and popularity and fame. And so people feel like, well, I am Christian, insert the category, and God has blessed me with, you know, hundreds thousand followers or, you know, X amount of money on my bank and I'm doing a tour and I just signed this deal. And they think that that's a form of holiness. And they're not, they're like not enough people in our modern age are in it to pursue Christ or to be holy. Those are hard. Those are hard conversations to have because when, when, when you're saying, well, look at these blessings that I have, look at these good things. These are obviously blessings from God, right? I, if, if I'm being blessed and it's obviously right, that's not, you know what I'm saying? Like they're, so they're saying, well, if, if I'm being applauded and, and lauded for the things that I'm doing, that must be good. That must be God's will. I think too many people are blind to why they what what holiness is and what it means to pursue holiness and so we can't just keep standing here like looking in the mirror and being like guys come on like at some point we have to just start showing it we have to just start walking it out and i'll give you a, a, a good example we we can't be the talk show that says this secular person did this and i'm outraged now let's talk about jesus like we can't keep doing that like we have our own culture. We have our own issues and, and topics and stuff that, that that pertains even to the sec to the secular world. Even when when Beethoven, I believe it's Beethoven, came out with "Joyful, Joyful," dun, 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 dun. that was mainstream and it was glorifying God. And he didn't have to explain it to anybody. That's just what it was. And it, and we still know what that song is. And if if Christians are pursuing christ and get back to the business of just glorifying god through our culture through our arts through our works god will do the rest he'll whatever he wants to last will last and what's going to fade away is going to fade away and I, I think that's the root of our problem is people just don't love jesus and, and we, can't, we can't separate the sheep from the goats we can't separate the wheat from the tares but we can be aware of the fact that people just don't love jesus i can't help that i'm sorry and, and well and, and like a byproduct of that is that now we're seeing Christianity not that I, I don't want to say it's popular it's but it's like this fad that's happening even amongst the mainstream right oh yeah that, that yeah but but it's because they get horrible representations of what it means from individuals again why do I have this level of influence? Why do I have access to these people, these places, these things? It's not to introduce a watered down version of who Jesus is. I absolutely hate to see artists who have accomplished things from a gospel space, from a Christian space. People only know you because you make music about the Lord. But when you get into these secular platforms like a breakfast club or a club Shay Shay, you use it as an opportunity to talk about the church, to dismiss the church, to dismiss church people. Yeah. But church people are how you got here. Church people prayed for you and supported you. And when you did whatever you did and you've done things throughout the time that we've known you publicly, church people have supported you and welcomed you back. But now you want to blame the fact that you didn't work with Prince or some other secular artist on the fact that you was concerned about what church people would say about you. I hate the fact that we feel as though that we can go into these secular spaces and in order to convince them about how cool we are in Christianity, we'll talk about the church, the, 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 the part of it that we need, that we want to dismiss. And then we just don't realize and recognize how the enemy is, is, is working in, in, in underneath those things. And we think 
that we're doing good and we think that we're outreaching. And again, we think that we're doing what the scripture says when you know, Paul again said, becoming all things to all men that I might save some. But what you're, you're creating them. The Bible also says that Jesus rebuked the Pharisees because he said, man, y'all will go over land and sea. And I think we've talked about this before to make one proselyte, one convert. And you make him twice the child of hell that you are. Why? Because you're giving him a horrible example of what it is to be this person, to be this thing, to live this life. And so when we talk about fad, when we talk about popularity, we also have to look at the fact that when we see certain individuals and uh, we could drop names all day, when we talk about, uh, you know, Snoop putting out a gospel album, why did he feel comfortable enough to do that? Because we're not going to say anything. We're not going to hold individuals accountable by and large collectively. We're going to support it. And guess what? It goes number one. And guess what? It also goes on to win awards in the gospel space. But unapologetically, Snoop doesn't ever come out and say, I'm saved. I'm a Christian now, blah, blah, blah. He just made an offering. For some people, this is a niche and it works for them. Yeah, we, we, we're, we're putting our efforts into trying to get the attention of people that are if we're going to speak plainly about it they're making a mockery of the faith right Facts. but then there are people out here who are legitimately serious about seeing their lives change that are searching that are expecting a certain level of interaction a certain level of um I would say modeling, right? Uh, they're, they're looking for people that are willing to show them what it means. Like we we go back to the the very scripture that five twenty comes from, right? Acts five twenty. They're looking for someone who's going to stand up and tell them about this life, right? And we're underserving those individuals. Absolutely. Yeah, and I was going to say not everybody is that serious. Like a good portion of them are. They're like, oh, we we like they think they gonna make god cool again or something yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? like, yeah. it's like you don't have that on lock bring a sexy back the creator of creativity but we gonna help him right um and and there is a good portion of christians that are like that but what i think <laughs> i think the famous zero part of it is that um <laughs> it's just a, it's an easy fix because a lot so many of us are gullible and just, just dumb so it's like you can have uh Little Nas X be like, oh, I'm going through my Christian. He's not preaching the gospel. He's not preaching repentance. He's not showing repentance. He's not doing anything remotely Christian. He's saying like weird pagan stuff like I call on angels. Like, bro, that's not normal. Like, that's not normal from from a biblical Unless you're Paula White. At all. Dun, dun. Like there might like you know what I mean? Like you might have heard <laughs> Get some her you might have interpreted Katie. one scripture where it might <laughs> seem like they were doing something like that, but that's that's very much not normal that's pagan and so they they don't care about that that's that's we, we take we give them too much credit when we say that. what it is is a quick fix i'm already famous enough to chart on the christian chart and then this will get all the 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 christians chattering about it and then i can call the ones i don't like haters and then the ones i do like i can just take their money and add it to the pile i got over here it's it's an easy fix if you if you're just what's what languishing that's a good fix for you just you know the christian market is very small and the secular market has just a lot more in it so just come over for a minute just do a christianish song listen to dax's song listen to it Lil Nas x song listen to some of these people that snoop dogg like you said they're not preaching christianity or true repentance or anything like that they're saying some kind of christian kind of christianese yeah and and that's good enough and that's shameful for the christian market the the gatekeepers first and foremost like shame on you people for just allowing some people for allowing an active homosexual to come out and just be like i call on angels yeah let's put that on the christian market like no discernment whatsoever not that's discernment. you want to you gatekeep now as long as it's not rappers or whatever and so yes there's a lot of people who are like who will accept it because they they're gonna make god relevant they're gonna make god cool and they're silly in their own right but it's also the gatekeepers that are silly enough to let this stuff through by not being by not scrutinizing at all because i guess we're supposed to just give everybody a chance because because reason because the bible says like it's just a non-contextual interpretation of 
our acceptance for everyone. Facts. And while we love everybody, we don't co-sign everything. And that's something that, again, as saints of God, we really need to step our game up concerning. Um, it's just not about not loving people. But when we talk about accepting things that are contrary to what we believe, who are you going to choose? Are you going to choose Jesus or are you going to choose people? At the end of the day, if you choose people in an effort to serve people, you are actually allowing them to be your master because whatever it is that you bow down to is what you serve. You right? fear man more than God. So you fear man more than God. You love the the, the praise and John says you love the praise of men more than God's cosign on your life, man. And it's a dangerous space to be. And I want to make sure that everybody who's listening understands before you say, oh man, them 520 dudes, they just some haters, blah, blah, blah. Listen, this isn't about what we say is right. This is about looking at scripture and determining what God says is right. And then lining up and measuring these things in our lives and how we do what we do to that because that's the standard it's not about what we think it's not about us calling out certain things for the sake of doing it again this is not about clickbait we're not trying to up those numbers we've talked about that this is an important part of building community bridging gaps having conversations getting unity fostered developed nurtured and then advancing the kingdom of god but in order to do that there has to be a standard that we're looking at our standard is the word of God. So before you call yeah. us haters for this approach or having these conversations or discussing these things, at the end of the day, we are all going to stand before God and give an account for our lives and our actions and our words and our thoughts and our feelings and how we responded. So we've all got to answer for that stuff. This is not about us hating on you and hating on your pursuits or hating on what you want to do or what you feel as though God has given you to do. How so when the fruit is very, very ungodly? And I think Jesus said it best when he was saying, I didn't come to judge the world. The world was already under judgment. Man. I'm just showing you what the standard is. Like, that's what Bruh. he said. And so for me to have to follow that example, why am I mad at you? Look, look, if I'm hating on something that you're doing and it's just me hating them because it's corny, it's different because it's not, not holy. Holiness is a binary standard. You are either holy or you're not. Or not. No There's middle no ground. Gradation. There's no like a, a switch Facts. that gets and And... God does all the heavy lifting on that side. So all I, I'm like, I'm pursuing God. He's the one who's holy. Christ's holiness is attributed to me. Anything I'm doing that's outside of that is not holy. And that's Agreed. the whole goal. That's that's so I'm not judging you. I'm judging maybe your actions based on whether or not they're holy. And that's a pretty simple standard. I think you can do that. You know, people, oh, just do the best I can. You do the best you can today? Well, no. You know what I'm saying? Like, so don't even go there with it. <laughs> no, agree. Not, agree, just, agree. I, I mean, would we take the same attitude if somebody with arm was on fire? And we'd be like, bro, bro, them flames getting kind of big. I mean, I ain't trying to cramp your style or whatever. You, Your hair is on fire, though. Like, <laughs> bro, bro, we would not do that. It's just ridiculous. Agree. Well, and, and I want to circle back around to this man because i think it's really important is you know we want we're out here like chasing this influence right we, we want to influence people and yet we want to influence certain people to the point where we're missing out on the opportunities to really influence individuals with what matters right not influence so that we can gain status in this world but influence individuals with the impact that carries on throughout eternity right and we're talking about you know contending for the faith within even christian culture itself and we have these individuals who have been overlooked and underserved and they're some of them holding on by a thread man and some of, and some of them could have who who knows who knows what potential is within them and, and what God is going to do if they have that, that if they have people come along and support them and encourage them man and we're we're missing out on it because oh we want the world to tell be us swaggy. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we're the missing world out to on good us. stuff that's happening because we're chasing after nonsense and God is not enough but, but like, we're, we're selling God, we're selling Jesus, we're selling heaven, we're selling hope. But you don't believe in the used car that you're trying to push off on other people. 
Well, and, and we see people that are coming into these churches, man, that are feeling like they don't have you know a, a face. They don't have an identity. They don't. They're they're not seen, and they're walking right back out the door. And some of them leaving for good. I mean, I hope that that's not the case, right? I hope that people that are genuinely seeking that connection with God will be able to, you know, that, that I believe that he's going to show himself to them somewhere, even if it's not in the place where they expect to find it. Like this radio show, when they hear us talking, yo, that's how I feel. That's what I've been talking about. Like, that's why we have to be good at what we're doing. Fellas, how can 520 contend for the faith here in this new year? One thing that is hard to articulate that I can't stress enough when I do find the words is chasing after, not the chasing, highlighting things that are being done the way we want to see them done or highlighting things that are important to us in the Christian culture versus spending so much time saying i can't believe blah 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 because i said to you guys earlier like there's i usually try to understand both sides of an argument and there is so much insanity it's just literally like they're just making up new ways to be insane and it's getting exhausting and becoming a waste of time being like can you believe this guy is doing this thing that's not normal like i can't keep researching insanity I have a standard and I would rather highlight that standard. So bringing up those stories of good things, you know, when like when that Christian video game developer went way over their goal in like 24 hours and it was like, that was really cool to see. And I want to highlight that and let people know like this stuff is out here for you. So that's one example that I'm bringing to the table. What do you got? Um, I think it's vitally important, uh, like we've been doing, but just with another level of consistency. Having discussions, man, that are intentional yet still organic. So that means that there's a purpose behind um, the discussion that we're having. Um, that doesn't mean that we're trying to control um, the conversation, if you will. And, and so, again, you know, we mentioned it, making sure that the lines of communication are open because, you know, we sit down. You got two saints of God, whether it's a, a guy and a guy, a girl and a girl, a girl and a guy, a husband and a wife, uh, uh, an uncle and a nephew, uh, uh, a parent and a child. If we're both saints of God and we have a disagreement, a dispute or what have you, what's the common denominator? What's that thing that's supposed to guide us and we come together towards the middle? That's the word of God. So if we're finding issue um, or error in something that someone is or isn't doing, um, that we're supposed to be able to bring that to scripture um, and test it and try and make the necessary adjustments according to that. And so having those conversations, having those discussions, um, using our voice um, as a means to, like you said, to call attention to certain things um, and making sure that, you know, the voice of God gets heard in different things. And I know that that sounds weird and crazy. Um, uh, I love reformers, but please don't come for me when it comes to this. Um but God deserves a say in these situations and circumstances. So, you, you know, you run through and have a bunch of stuff that's going on, you know, Christmas time, things of that nature. Um, we've allowed it to become everything but Christ. And of course, you've got a bunch of individuals who feel as though oh, it's pagan. Why are you doing X, Y, Z? How could you? Shame on you, my brother. Why don't you understand that this is not what we ought to be doing? And, and, and so, again, just making sure that God's voice is crystal clear. Um, when it comes down to things, being sober, like there's a lot of that that's missing in the space. And so I just think that these are some of the ways that we go about um, earnestly contending for the faith. And again, just making sure that we bring things back to scripture. Yeah. And, and I, I think when you say sober, you mean not belligerent? Is well, that, is that the interpretation? Is, so or? not even just belligerent, but in terms of being sober minded, the approach, okay. you know, yeah. it's so easy to drink the Kool Aid. Yeah. Because the Bible says. Don't eat it. Facts. All a man's ways are right in his own eyes. So that means that everything that I sue and I and I want to do is going to make sense to me. I can find a way to rationalize why I feel what I feel about whatever the situation or circumstances. Yes, everything that you want to do, you can find a way to make it make sense to you. And that's a setup. Mm -hmm. So again, bringing things back to scripture and, and not being so high on ourselves that we can't learn something. Like we should, we should always be. If you're not learning, you're not growing. 
there's a Christian friend that every no matter what I say to him, it's interpreted in the most malicious way possible. And so like we just I guess we don't How talk. dare you say you love me? Yeah, yeah. I just can't you. you said I liked your album, like <laughs> <laughs> What do you mean? You're saying it could be better? I know you were saying it could be better. You know what? Don't, don't even talk to me, bro. Don't, I, I need to go pray about this. Yeah, we, we're going to not do that in 2024. <laughs> well, sure. but one thing we did do, though, is we said, hey, we want to be intentional about being more transparent, being very clear about what we believe as a platform right i mean it's one thing to say here and talk as individuals and to be in agreement, but we're gonna say hey not only as individuals but as a collective unit you know going back to what katie said you know in the spirit of unity we need to have a statement that we're all behind right and so one thing we've been doing behind the scenes is we actually updated our uh, mission statement you know our description about the platform i'm not going to read this whole thing but there's a couple of things i wanted to point out here you know we we're, were like this is important for us to be able to share with you, you all you know the listeners our community um, we wanted to be able to share a couple of things with you one of the thing being you know we've been talking about indie christian culture i think you know that's a great fa- uh, a, a great uh, phrase but i can also understand how it'd be hard to for some people to understand what we mean by that right and so we've added to that where it's faith that goes beyond the mainstream, right? We are are pushing for something more. We're seeking something deeper than what we're finding out here, um, you know, on that surface level. So I think that's important for us. And then the other aspect I wanted to highlight, guys, is we added in some core beliefs. And when Katie's talking about, hey, everything that we are feeling like we need to do that we're being led to do or that we're saying we need to stack that up against scripture we need to make sure that scripture supports what it is we are putting out there and that is where these core beliefs have come in because we took the time to say okay we we, we only got four of them you know we're not you know out here doing a church plant we need a whole book or whatever right but um (laughs) we've got four And we took the time to be like, hey, we feel like this is important. Okay, do we have scripture that backs it up at the same time, right? So I'm going to read these real quick, and then I want to let you guys weigh in on them, on why you believe that these were important things for us to put out there for everyone to see. One being we believe in God the Father, Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit, who testify of each other and, and are in agreement. It is by this agreement that we're able to have eternal life. Number two, we believe that the word of God is infallible and the standard by which believers must live. Number three, we believe in the importance of biblical unity as demonstrated throughout the Gospels and strive to point the hearts of the children back to the Father. This unity is undeniable proof that God sent Jesus Christ into the world to be the Savior of the world. And finally, we believe in distinguishing between the kingdom of God and the world's system affirming the Christian's charge to submit to the authority of Christ over the influence of society. Fellas, why was this important? Why are these just, when we're talking about, you know, carrying that charge, how, how do these come into play? Um, well, I'll chime in real quick and I'll try to keep it as short as sweet and possible. What I think is important, um, there's a ton of people who, can tell you that they believe but can't tell you really what they believe and why they believe what they believe and scripture tells us that we're supposed to always have an answer when people ask us of the hope that we have um and so just really taking hard stances um in a culture society um dispensation where people are just really drawing lines in the sand um, and those lines have a tendency to move, to, you know, depending on where you are, the toe, the water hits the beach and kind of pushes your line back. Um, it's important um, that for us as believers and for us as a platform of believers, um, by believers, for the body, um, that we take some hard line stances and positions that, again, line up with scripture um, so that for us, you know, it's reassurance. Um, and for, you know, our listeners, our audience, um, 
people who are engaging and interacting with us, you come to 520. Um, we, we want you to know what to expect. Um, and we pray that you get what you expect, maybe even more than what you expect when you come in contact with us. Um, but our goal, uh, again, is to make sure that God is glorified. Having, like Katie said, an articulated beliefs on at least a few things, we can at least strive for those few things. We don't have to get it perfect. We don't have to get it across the board. Like you said, we're not planting a church. But we can at least say, Here's a, here's a couple of things that I'm going to do and we can build our audience and attract our audience based on these few things. Agree. Uh, well, and, and I just want to add this part to, um, you know, it's, it's important, man. Like, you know, we've consistently pointed out, um, throughout this conversation, just kind of the variance, um, that, you know, we can run into when people can come in contact with. Um, but just know that, the standard that we hold for each other is the same standard that we hold ourselves accountable to. So it's not like, again, we're doing this um, simply to point fingers, et cetera, like some of the conversations and stuff like that that we're going to be having. Um, you know, those if, if the word isn't catching you first, like if you're if you're, you're going to minister a message, if it's not ministering to you, then how is it going to you know really minister to other people? Like um, we're holding ourselves accountable to the same standard. Which means that as we continue to go and, and do what it is that God has called for us to do, we're going to continue to grow. We're going to continue to um, be sharpened um, by the iron that we use to to sharpen us and to, to prayerfully sharpen you guys. So, again, it's not from a place um, of a pedestal. It is from a place of uh, or a posture um, of surrender um, that we push forward in this. Yeah, man. And so... When we look at these core beliefs, when we think about earnestly contending for the faith, and we know that there are people out here who are being underserved, you know, we felt like we had a real opportunity when it comes to this new season of the show, man. And, and Zero actually brought some stuff to the table. He's like, hey, you know, check out this list, man. Uh, I, I, this isn't how Zero actually talks, but. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm taking creative <laughs> liberty. Here, so, but uh, I mean, I could let him. I could, I could let him explain it, but I'm not going to. Um, zero. <laughs> but he was like, "Hey, I want you to look at this list, man. I've been putting this list together of what I like to refer to as important pillars of the faith." But he's like, "These are things that I think a lot of, you know, especially younger, not." necessarily by age but just younger in the faith believers potentially could be struggling to understand or or working their way through huh what was the word that i used um you probably called people idiots um no no no, i don't know (laughs) to describe these these um these subjects they were like um oh crap it's like another way you didn't say tenets of the faith. Oh, it essentials, tenet. non-essentials, like they essentials, like yeah, like essentials and non-essentials. Like these are more like these are more essential topics. Yeah, yeah, and so a little sneak peek for y'all here on the first episode of season six in my KD six, voice. Six, 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 six. <laughs> uh, a little sneak peek is that this <laughs> season we're going to be tackling some of these topics, man, diving into them, and hopefully doing so in a way. Um, that makes them a little bit more easy to digest. There right? you go, not, approachable not for sure. Yeah. So, <laughs> so zero. I guess let me actually let you talk since this, these were, you know, this 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 start with the list that you kind of put together, man. Uh, you can maybe give a, a few topics just for examples of what's coming up, man. Uh, but just talk about why these particular topics you know really stood out to you and what you're hoping happens over the course of 2024 okay so the reason i feel like they're essential things for a christian to understand or at least to have worked through them even if you get to a place where you can't conclude an understanding is these are all in my as in my understanding these are all tied to examples of big things and big events that are going to happen through your life questions that somebody's going to ask you um big events that okay like one uh where is it where is it uh theosity 
right? Or theodicy. Theodicy is the question of like, why does God allow bad things to happen to good people? Why does God allow suffering in the world if he's an all good God?